name's Ben. I'm a clinical scientist in histocompatibility and immunogenetics, and I work at the Manchester Royal Infirmary in Manchester. So histocompatibility and immunogenetics, the field that we work in, um, primarily the focus of that is transplantation. Um, so our jobs were involved in the transplant of, for example, kidneys, pancreas, heart and lung, um, and also bone marrow or stem cell transplants to cure diseases such as leukemia. At school I did the normal GCSE subjects. Um, I also did business studies, geography, uh, German and history. Um, this, this is the kind of blood that we get from patients who are on the transplant list who are waiting transplants. Um, and we get these samples on a regular basis uh, whilst they're on the transplant list. We keep these samples and some of them we will test to see if they have any antibodies in. Um, now the patient, unfortunately some patients can raise antibodies to uh, foreign tissue types. You and I have different tissue types in general. Um, there's a lot of different tissue types that people can be. Um, and if people form antibodies to a foreign tissue type, then if they're transplanted with that tissue type, that's going to cause complications for them. Um, most commonly you see uh, either graft loss at the time of transplantation or early graft loss um, early on in the lifetime of the transplanted organ. Um, so it's important to try and uh, get to the point where we can say whether or not that's likely to happen and try and avoid that from happening. Um, that's the stage one, the antibody detection. Um, we then move towards a test at the time of transplantation where we just double check that that isn't going to occur, that the graft won't be rejected if the transplant occurs. Um, after high school I, I went to university and I subscribed on a four-year course um, doing a honours course in biology at Edinburgh University, um, specialising my fourth year in uh, virology as a, as a specialism. Um, and um, throughout my university career, I tried to get as much work experience as possible. And after university, just um, looked for a job which really interested me. Um, so I applied to do a trainee programme as a clinical scientist, uh, and that took three years before I got my diploma. And then a year afterwards, I worked towards my um, official registration with the Health Professions Council, which enabled me to become a clinical scientist. We use these plates for what's called complement-dependent cytotoxicity cross-matching, CDC cross-matching. Um, and basically, this is a, a transplant in a test tube. Um, so we, we, we do this test um, either in the run-up to transplants for people who are going for a, a live donor transplant um, or at the time of transplantation for someone who's having a, a deceased donor transplant um, to assess uh, the compatibility of the organ donor and of the recipient. Um, and we do this by combining cells from the donor um, with serum or the clotted blood from the patient. Um, and seeing if the cells after a, a series of incubations are alive or dead and that basically uh, gives you an indication of what would happen in the body. So this is the start of a cross-match test. Um, this is the kind of test that we perform at the time of transplantation. Um, and we combine blood from a potential organ recipient with blood from an organ donor. Um, the two different blood samples are incubated for a period of time um, and then we add another blood component called complement. Um, the complement will then result in live or dead cells after a period of about an hour and we can visually visualize this down the microscope and if you see live cells then that implies that the graft outcome is going to be okay when the surgery goes ahead. Um, what we don't want to see is dead cells um, because that would indicate that there's going to be a problem the graft will be rejected. Um, and we visualise this by looking down a microscope and seeing either red cells, which are dead cells, or green cells, which are live cells. The best part of the training really is that you're learning something new over a three-year period, and it, it, there's a lot of information to absorb, and it's, it's very interesting. Um, the hardest part is that there's a lot of information to absorb. It's a lot of hard work. You have to put a lot of work um, outside of working hours um, and also the standard is higher than at university. So this is a quick uh, explanation of the CTC test that uh, Ben has just explained. So we have our organ donor and we take a cell from that organ donor. So these are the guys that are going to give their organs to someone. Uh, so they take a cell from them and then they get the organ recipient and they take a blood sample from the organ recipients. These are the guys that are actually going to be receiving the organ and that blood sample 
they take the plasma, so they spin it in a centrifuge to separate the blood into its components and take the plasma and in that plasma there are some antibodies and these antibodies can react with foreign cells when they're introduced to the body. So in a, this Petri dish that you saw uh, Ben using, they take the donor cells and put them in the little tray and then they mix it with some plasma that has got the antibodies in this tray. So they mix the cell and the plasma together and then they add an immune system chemical called complement. And then this chemical uh, kickstarts the process of killing off any foreign cells. And it does this when an antibody attaches onto a foreign cell. So in these little dishes that we've been looking at with Ben, uh, the cells that are in the dish react, potentially could react with the antibodies from the uh, recipient. If they do, then complement is activated and it kills off those donor cells. Now if the antibodies don't actually stick to the donor cell, so there's no reaction between the cell and the antibodies, there's no activation of complements. So the cells uh, aren't killed off, they actually survive. So if we get a positive test, that means that the antibodies have reacted with the cell and the cells are going to be killed off by the complement. If it's a negative test, that's good because the antibodies haven't reacted with the cell, which means complement hasn't actually been activated and the cell survives. So if this was done in, in a, an actual organ transplant, transplanting a real organ from the donor to the recipient, the recipient's antibodies pretty much wouldn't react with this organ to kill it off.